Section 5, from Letters from the Relentless Pursuit, Chasing Down Hell. This was written November of 2008. It was about three years ago when things really started falling apart. It was one of the many nights where I was out until the early hours of the morning. When I got back to the house, I did what I always do. Drink, smoke, and hide in a stack of albums until dawn. When I finally crawled into bed, the sun was coming up. She was lying there alone, crying. This wasn't the first time this had happened. This was pretty common. She asked me why I had to live like this. Why I couldn't settle down and be the husband that she wanted me to be. She wanted, she wanted me to quit living hard. She basically summed it up in one sentence. She told me that I was living out all those songs by Hank Sr. and Cash that I love so much. It was a sad realization for both of us. She knew that this wasn't some phase that I was going to get over. In fact, she later said that deep down inside she'd hoped that I would, over time, grow out of the band and the music and all that business. It was glaringly obvious that I couldn't give her the life that she needed and deserved. It was also at that point that it came clear that I wasn't trying to live up to the life that guys like Waylon and George Jones were speaking of in their music. The truth is, for some of us at least... Those songs aren't just stories of heartache and the dark side of life. For some of us, those songs are our life. For some of us, that music is who we are. Now, the Chasing Down Hell Project was my form of therapy. In the last three years, I've been through bankruptcy, divorce, home foreclosure, and displacement. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't pity myself in the least bit. I brought much of this trouble on myself. However, these personal experiences are what made me write the majority of these lyrics. Though many of these songs were inspired by specific events, the theme's are universal. I believe that most people can relate to struggling with depression, self-destructiveness, addiction, and misery. I know that many of us live in a personal battle that no one knows about or understands. When I first played these songs for friends and family, they were, they were worried because of the dark tone of the lyrics. Even though many of these stories are autobiographical, all I simply did was verbalize what we all are going through or have been through. To sum it up, most of these songs are about the frailty and general feeling of inadequacy that we all feel inside. I believe that all of us are very fragile. It is only in times of great duress that we see how we really feel. I believe it, in times, it is in times of great emotional pain where a level of insight and understanding is reached that otherwise would not have been achieved. It's a bitch writing songs like these. As I've said before, I learned from Hank Williams that uh, the only way to write truly good lyrics is to take your own personal inadequacies and expose them for the whole world to see. It is only when you are completely vulnerable and all the raw nerves are exposed that you can hit on the core of the human condition. This might sound like a bunch of hoity-toity pop psychology shit, but this is what inspired me to write and record these songs. Now, when it came to the music, all rules were out the window. When I started this project, I was a complete fucking wreck and wanted to make music simply to get my mind off my life. The recording process consisted of getting fucked up and messing around with old material that I've been writing. I believe that laid-back attitude allowed me to experiment with music and have some fun with it. In that sense, this is greatly different than the motherfucking Saints albums. The fact is, playing at the level of speed and intensity that we, that band, played with took a certain level of discipline. When the band went to record, we did it all live to tape. We practiced the songs relentlessly prior to recording and knew exactly what, how we wanted them to sound. There was little to no effects and things were pretty cut and dried. On this project, there was a lot more creative freedom and I got to do things that I'd wanted to do for a long time. I used open G and D tunings, played with a slide on two songs, used a piano on one track, played drums with brushes to get that Johnny Cash slash Sun Studio boom chicka boom sound, Messed around with different mics, added effects, and played with instruments I really didn't know how to play. Basically, I did whatever the fuck my imagination could dream up. I got the idea for the heavy delay on the vocals from listening to classic country albums. The constant kick drum sounds from listening to guys like Joe Buck do the one-man band thing. 
The minimalistic drum beat with the loud guitar comes from listening to Howlin' Wolf and R.L. Burnside records over the last couple years. There was an unseen level of friction created on these recordings that I think worked to my benefit. Going from playing and singing metal and punk rock for over 10 years to playing the style on this recording was a challenge. As I've said before, I'm not a good musician or vocalist. On top of that, I was playing in ways I'd never played before. This was a good thing because it gave these tracks a rough edge. I believe that all too often music sounds overly clean due to polished studio mus- musicians and overproduction. I wanted this recording to be simple, raw, and to the point. So, uh, why am I calling this solo project St. Christopher? From all the years of playing in the band, I got two nicknames. One was Motherfucking Chris, and the other one was St. Christopher. I wanted to go under my real name, but there is already a girl named Chris Webster going around playing in some pop country act. To be honest, I really fucking hate the whole St. Christopher handle. However, I've learned one of the worst things to do when you get a nickname is try to avoid it. So fuck it, St. Christopher it is. I've been called a lot worse. So let the solo tour begin. The booking has already started. This will be my first time out on the road as my solo act, and I cannot wait. I'll have no band with me, just my guitar, my van, and the stomp box me and my brother constructed out of plywood and a drum trigger. I've already had people tell me that I'm the loudest solo act they've ever seen. I cannot wait to share this music with the whole country. And so here I am chasing down hell. I believe the title of this EP sums up the music and this attitude perfectly. To me, this premise basically means that you're emotionally, financially, and spiritually fucked. However, instead of lying to yourself and trying to hide from how busted up you are inside, you embrace it. Chaos is my favorite drug, and I find it through this music. Maybe one day my outlook will change, but at this point, the house and a wife and the kids and all that ain't for this motherfucker. You all can keep your counseling and your church and your rehab. All I want right now is the music and all the destruction that goes with it. I'd rather die on these terms than live any other way. <laughs> 